Uh, item B, receive oral update on the El Camino uh, Real Median Improvements Project. Laura. Actually, while the staff is preparing, um, I just uh, for the benefit of the City Council, um, I asked for this report to be made tonight, not because there is any action to be considered, but because this is a highly visible, long anticipated project, and it is one that, uh, about which I've received a number of questions. And so our interest here tonight is to provide you with a brief update. Um, and again, for the purpose of informing the public as this exciting pro project moves forward to completion. Honorable Mayor, Council Member, good evening. How the City Manager uh, already uh, informed you, I will give you a short update on the status of this uh, very uh, highly uh, monitored by the public and everybody and uh, uh, presenting a high public interest. I will just remind you what is the uh, scope of the project. Uh, those highlighted uh, median on El Camino will be redeveloped. Uh, that is the intent. Uh, those medians should look like very close to this picture at the end of uh, the development of the project. And also uh, the two monuments will be installed uh, both uh, at uh, uh, the southern entrance of uh, this project. The notice to proceed for this project was issued in July 21st of this year. Part of the contract document, um, in the contract document was included 90 working days for the project. Uh, what is very specific, uh, what is very different for this project versus other project uh, in the city is that the Just work is taking pa if you feel place prepared in this evening uh, to provide me uh, Caltrans right of way and based on a uh, encroachment permit issued by them. Uh, part of the encroachment permit limited the construction time between 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock uh, p.m. that really gave the contractor a uh, very short construction uh, window, in essence, uh, between uh, 9.30 and 2.30 each day. Also, uh, based on uh, certain limitation of that encroachment permit, the project uh, needed to be um, uh, closed down for uh, uh, water de uh, weather delays and also uh, based on other uh, <coughs> traffic related issues region wide like uh, the Bay Bridge uh, repair. During that time uh, Caltrain uh, revoked the issued encroachment permit. On um, last Friday was the 59th working day on this project. And at that time, uh, about 65% uh, of their working days uh, was uh, consumed by the contractor. And uh, from the initial uh, scope of the project, uh, they uh, basically um, already performed around 75% of the initial scope of the project. The challenge uh, with this project uh, was also that uh, the contractor encountered certain unforeseen site condition um, on median on one uh, damaged existing irrigation main line, on uh, median four uh, base rock removal, uh, on 10 and 11 underground concrete storm drain which basically is a uh, storm, uh, existing uh, storm uh, box. On uh, median 15, also is uh, existing obstruction underneath uh, the uh, roadbed. 
based on those already uh, mentioned by me uh, reason, the city uh, extended uh, the working days for this project. And uh, right now, the expected uh, completion time for this project is uh, March of next year. To uh, place this uh, time frame in context, I heard mentioning a few times uh, the construction on uh, the median for San Bruno uh, that uh, was a little bit faster than how is, uh, uh, the construction is, uh, is at least is proceed going on on this project. Uh, that uh, construction lasted a little bit, uh, well over five months, and uh, certainly uh, wasn't the time of the construction wasn't limited. How is in this case that basically the contractor has much narrower uh, construction window than uh, for that project, and uh, also on this project the contractor encountered. Uh, challenging site condition, which was unforeseen at the time of uh, the issuance of the contract. If you have any questions. Any questions of staff? Chair? Uh, OK, so there's a delay, but there's, there's, not, a, there's not an increase in, uh, in the cost of the project. I mean, there are some unforeseen projects that would still within the contingency. Us, any uh, unforeseen condition in the field uh, will have a financial <coughs> impact. It is right now based on already agreed on change order and changes uh, in uh, for the project. Uh, those contingencies covered the cost of the project, but uh, the la some of those items are still under negotiation and uh, uh, that uh, will go over the approved budget for this project. And this is my expectation at this time that uh, the department will be back uh, in uh, probably not the next council meeting, but the following uh, council meeting to ask for uh, additional budget uh, appropriation for the project. Uh, I'm, I'm just a little, I'm a little confused. I, it, you showed a slide that represented as of last Friday, 64% uh, of the work days. And then the next statement, you, you, I'm, I'm not clear on what that represented, a 74% uh, construction time or con construction completion. Is uh, that, am I correct? You are correct, and I didn't clarify well enough, and that's why it's a little bit confusing the information. Uh, the 64 percent and the 70, uh, the 65 and the 74 uh, uh, percent represent the initial time and the initial scope of the project. That really show that uh, if would not have been any unforeseen uh, condition on this project, then the contractor would uh, have been a uh, little bit even ahead of schedule. But due to those unforeseen condition in the field, uh, that had a uh, negative impact on the schedule and also on the budget of the project. So, so where, what is the percentage of completion right now? I based don't have March, based on a March completion date now. Um, I will have to follow up with a specific percentage for you, and I will send you an email with those percentages. Uh, through the chair, and I know you keep saying these unforeseen circumstances. What are these unforeseen items that we're referring to? Or if that's, you don't have all that, uh, are you talking about the weather condition? You're talking about the Bay Bridge closure, but you said there was something else, and that's what I'm not hearing as to what, unless I've missed that. Uh, those unforeseen condition, uh, site conditions are uh, the base rock in the sub-base and also uh, those concrete storm drain boxes in uh, median 10 and 11. And so what, how much of the contingency has this taken up? Uh, right now it's very close uh, that uh, uh, the exi uh, is almost already uh, the cost is very close to 
contingency for this project. What is your estimate, or maybe it's surely to, I know you're going to come back. Yes. I, I notice you're going to do it when Mr. Franzel is off. So I don't know if you're doing that <laughs> just to make it easier on it or not. But but what are we? Uh, what's the uh, what's the thought of the overage that this is going to cause because of these unforeseen site conditions in addition to the other items that you mentioned? I certainly uh, I don't want to guess. Okay, no, let's uh, not do that. But uh, uh, it's my intent to come back. Uh, <coughs> those change orders. One change order and those unaddressed issues are under negotiation with the contractor, okay. and that's why uh, the contractor came back with two alternatives, and uh, what uh, which alternative of those two will be accepted by the city will have an impact on uh, uh, the final uh, cost. And, and that's and why and I cannot sh share that with you. Just to point point. out a little bit clearer, I mean, Many people understand, but like on median 15, where it says the obstruction of underneath El Camino Real roadway bed, those median str planter boxes were just built on top of the road. It's amazing that those trees got to some 20 feet tall with about two feet of soil. Uh, that's why you saw the edging of the median strips bulging out and the concrete moving because it couldn't penetrate the El Camino roadway bed. So the bed has been open, so now new plantings will actually be able to go all the way down through the ground. And it's amazing that those trees got to look, got to be as big as they are, and it's no wonder why they never looked all that great. There was really not much dirt there. There was a lot of roots, so. And, and, and my last comment is that my concern is, and I, and I understand that there's these unforeseen things, and uh, you can't thoroughly survey what, what they're going to, uh, uh, what they're going to come up with, or what they're going to contend with. But I don't, I'm, I'm very concerned that if you're saying right now that we've almost uh, exhausted all of the contingency, that your next report is going to say that we're going to be in, you know, a large percentage over budget and, uh, and how does that, you know, how does that affect the project? Uh, I don't want to think, I don't want to assume that this council is going to, you know, just say, okay, that's unforeseen, so I guess we have to approve it. And there's going to have to be some real, you know, soul searching on how to really, you know, complete this project if it, you know, if the cost gets out of hand. Councilmember Ibera, I am not expecting uh, the uh, um, cost to be much over. Uh, yes, you say we'll be over on, but I don't think we'll be too excessive over on at this time, based on what I know today, and uh, I. Uh, I think the department now have a uh, very good understanding what is uh, the existing condition in the field. And certainly this was a, uh, um, the department will make sure that phase two, uh, the lesson learned from uh, this uh, site condition on phase one uh, will be incorporated in phase two design to make sure that uh, uh, these uh, conditions will be assessed uh, during the design phase for phase two. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments, from council? Okay. 